get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founder of Rx Bars, the founder of P90X, Tony Horton. He talked about, uh, Rabbi, that he made money as a street mine. So before he sold millions of dollars of P90X, he actually put his head on the street, and that's how he made his, his food and rent money um, is as a street performer. Um, the uh, founder of Atari, Nolan Bushnell, talked about how when he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. And there's many more cool episodes. Check them out at inspiredinsider.com. Um, the episode today is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And our mission is to connect you with your best referral partners and clients And we do that through our Done For You podcast solution, which is like a Swiss army knife for your business. It serves as a vehicle for strategic partnerships, referral marketing, content marketing. I've met my my business partner and some of my best friends through it. I believe if you have a business, you should have a podcast, period. But um, it's more personal to me because it's not just about your business. It's about you leaving a legacy for yourself and for the guests that you feature. And it's really inspired by my grandfather who is a Holocaust survivor and he and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany and were the only members of their family to survive. And, and his words and legacy live on because of an interview the Holocaust Foundation did with him, which you can watch on my about page, which really inspires me. So yes, podcasting will help your business, but it really helps you and your guests leave a legacy. So um, I personally credit to the best thing I've done for my business and my life. If you have questions, you want to launch your own podcast, you can email us anytime, uh, support at rise25media.com. We're happy to answer any, any, answer any questions that you have. Today, I'm very excited. I have Rabbi Moes Navan, founding engineer at Mobileye and much more. But I first heard about Moes um, because my dad, Alan Weiss, went on an organized trip with Rabbi David Began. Shout out to his website, lechaimcenter.org. And he came back raving about the talk that you gave. Moaz. And just a little background about uh, Moaz is his professional experience in the research and development of digital hardware spans over 35 years. He's worked for IBM, NASA's JPL, News Corporation's NDS, and Mobileye, where he holds several patents in the field of image processing and computing hardware. Um, He lectures often on the elements underpinning what makes Israel the startup nation. And um, he gives a great talk. I, I suggest anyone check it out on YouTube. He helped create the chip that is powering the autonomous revolution. It's the chip that Intel bought for $15.3 billion. And as I was driving in today, I was was thinking, you know, the 0.3 is $300 million. Just the decimal of that is $300 million. So it's it's pretty remarkable. Um, And he talks about his journey. His story is the mobilized story. He talks about his story is the startup nation story, and his story is the story of the Jewish people. He talks about in the talk. So, Moz, thank you so much for taking the time, late night Israel time, to do this. I want to go back to when you were age seven or eight, and mm-hmm. you were thinking of this deep question of <clears throat> realize you realize at the time people died and. I'd love to explore this, I, your take on this, because you're a scientist and rabbi in one. What do you, what do you think happens after someone dies? Uh, what do I think happens after yeah. somebody dies? That's a good question. I mean, I, obviously I wasn't there and, and so I don't know. Um, I believe that, you know, there's, there's a sort of, okay, there's, there's, the, there's what Judaism talks about and there's also what, um, I don't know, there's, 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 there's a book called Life After Life by Raymond Moody. Um, there's lots of people where there's, where there's sort of this collective consciousness that talks about a tunnel and the light and, and relatives and seeing your life and so forth. Um, so, yeah, I kind of believe that that's the, that in general, I think that, yeah, that you're going to get to the other side and you're going to realize that, that, that this is a very limited reality that we've been in. And that there's this huge, huge reality out there, and that 
you're going to have, you know, a review of your life. And um, I think Arya Kaplan talks about this very rationally. And he says that, that um, you know, we don't believe in, in heaven and hell. You know, the hell is sort of the embarrassment of having wasted opportunities, right? And so when you're doing your life review, it's your life and there's nothing, you know, you're going to see, you're, you know, you know, no one needs to tell you, oh, that was good or that was a mistake or that was really not what you should have done. And, you know, so, but now you're going to be judging yourself. And um, so obviously that's going to be difficult on those times when we've blown it. And, uh, and I think also Judaism provides this kind of idea of tshuva on a daily basis, on an annual basis, you know, whenever you can to like, sort of like say, okay, I realize that that wasn't right. And I need to like work on that. And so then if you were going to have an, a life overview, so you would have said, yeah, I, I realized that already. So it's not a surprise and I'm not, I don't have any issues. I dealt with it. And it's the stuff that you didn't deal with. And so, um, I, yeah, I, that's, that's sort I, that I sort of believe in this kind of conventional uh, approach where, like I said, I think it's pretty well rooted in Jewish sources and it's in, in popular cultures around the world kind of ascribed to it. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, there's obviously, I, I just wanted to hear your take on it. Um, I was really curious and, you know, as far as the, you know, the, why did you, after you, after um, mobile, I sold, what made you decide to go on and get your PhD in this topic? Um, Cause you could, you could do whatever you want. You, know, um, you could correct. join another startup right. <laughs> if you, if you wanted to right. torture yourself. But yeah. um, I mean, why, I'm actually advising a startup just for yeah. fun on the side okay. right? um, uh, because people approached me, you know, but that wasn't like what I'm looking to do. I'm, I mean, it's interesting and so fine. Um, but really my, I'm, I'm trying to follow my dream of, of, of Judaism and philosophy. And so I'm doing Jewish philosophy and like you mentioned, I mean, when, when I was a little kid and I found out that people die, um, so that really jolted me. And it, and it jolted me in a way that not that like I was afraid or I don't know what. I just was like, okay, so, so what's the point? What's the point, right? And, and that's sort of driven me throughout my life. Um, is that is that I you know I think about things in a philosophical way and I'm trying to like understand you know what are we doing here and um, and and look you know I mean I'm not unique in that sense. Uh, Victor Frankl um, was a famous logotherapist uh, said that you know man is driven by purpose. You know we all at the end of the day try to find some meaning in our lives and. Um, it depends, you know, you can find meaning in small things. You can find meaning in big things. I, I, I try to find the meaning of life. Yeah. Yeah. Man's search for meaning is definitely one of my favorite, favorite books of all time. Right. Right. It's a very important book. You, you mentioned, I mentioned in the beginning, you know, the mobile story is a story of the startup nation, which is your story, the story of the Jewish people. Um, why? And you've got to, had a lot of people from all over the world come and try and figure out, why is Israel known as the startup nation? Correct. So what do you tell, what do you tell? What do people? I tell people? Yeah. Um, well, look, you know, I try to tell them this story, um, which is like you mentioned, it's basically like my story and the mobilized story and the story of the Jewish people. It's really a story of, of ups and downs. It's a really a story of like, you know, fighting the bullet and, and, and continuing to move forward in spite of everything. Right. It's being able to, you know, whether it's on a personal level and say, you know, I'm going to cut my salary in half because it's, I find it meaningful to move back to the land of Israel. Um, it's 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 working for a company where, you know, it, everything is cut to the bare bones and we're, we're, but we're going to fulfill this, you know, uh, on, on the company level. I mean, we were definitely very proud to be the only company on the face of the earth that was working on this one problem, trying to solve um, this image processing using um, basically doing 3D object detection with a single camera. Um, and, and it's also on the, on the Jewish nation level where we've definitely had to take hits and, and you know, hunker down and try to figure out and, 
and and not convert and not give up and and continue to persevere in our beliefs and so um that's really i think what the startup nation is about it's about purpose i mean uh uh, there's a famous quote that I bring in the middle of the book that basically with all of its difficulties, Israel has one commanding advantage, a sense of purpose. And so, you know, well, somebody once told me, oh, so do you think that, so if a, any, if some startup has purpose or they're going to be, they're going to make it? I'm like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> what I meant is that purpose gives you a drive and it gives you a will to persevere there's many other factors that make a, a company successful or not successful, but as an individual, as a corporation, or as a as a country, you know, if you have goals and you have and you and you and you believe in them, so that gives you purpose and that gives you drive, and and I think that's really what's fundamental about the Jewish people. Um, yeah, there's a great quote from Paul Johnson's book, The History of the Jews where he talks about that no people has argued as vehemently as the Jews that creation has a purpose. Hmm. You know, talking about startups, you know, like the, the person in your, your companies that hold your breath. Right. And so there's a lot, like you said, most, most startups don't succeed. Are there things that you look at because you've been through failed startups, you've been through obviously a successful one, that someone should just quit, like throw in the towel, like th they should not keep fighting and struggling. Are there certain factors that you, you, you see, you know, looking back that if someone is in a startup now, they've been toiling out, they could toil out for 10, 6, 15, 16, 20 years and it not have a successful outcome. Um, what do you look for in, if you were to invest in a company, let's say, that is asking you to invest a lot of money. Hey, this is what we have. What are you looking at to see, is this going to be successful? So, I mean, you're asking kind of like two different questions. I mean, there's the, there's the one question, like when should people throw in the towel versus, you know, what do you look at to see if, you know, it's a worthwhile investment that, you know, the company has good odds of continuing throwing in the towel is something very difficult. And, and on the startups that I've worked for, the towel was thrown in for you. Right? <laughs> um, most people don't throw in the towel. Like, you know, like uh, basically um, you're out of money, you know, um, and there's, and that could be for all kinds of reasons. But uh, a couple of the startups went under because of money. One was because they were spending way too much. You know, everybody was getting new cars and going out to lunch and just thinking, you know, oh, we, you know, they were burning money. And so they went, ran out. Okay. So that was, that was mismanagement. Um, the other company I went, I worked for that was the, they, they ran out of money was basically because they had planned on going to the stock market at the time when the stock market crashed. And so I, I you can't really blame the management, although, you know, they may, it would have been better to have more of a initial investment before hiring so many people to do so much work but um so that's one thing and the other about trying to look for you know a worthwhile startups i mean you know there's a lot of different factors uh you, you know mobile eye in hindsight obviously was a was a great idea because they were bringing new technology something that nobody ever did or everybody nobody ever even thought could be done to detect 3D objects with a single camera. Now that doesn't mean that every good startup is gonna have some kind of like scientific breakthrough, but you definitely need some kind of unique technology, you know? And then you need, uh, and then you need a, a business model, something that you're like, Mobileye was looking at a huge market, the entire, uh, entire automotive industry, right? To have a chip in every car, um, you know, that's a lot of, that's a lot of chips. And so you want to try to <laughs> yeah. be, you know, in a, in a, in a big market somewhere where there's a lot of need. Um, I remember my brother made fun of me once I wrote some little program to do like holiday calculations, you know, and, and he said, Oh, there is going to be a lot of people lining up to buy this one. <laughs> so, you know, not a big market. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, you want to try to, to, to focus on a big market. 
um, and have some kind of a technological advantage in terms of that you're bringing something new to the market. Um, and yep. then, of course, there's the people and the funding, um, you know, the people that, that they have to have some kind of experience within that, within that market and within that field. Yeah. Moise, first of all, I have, I have one or two last questions, but first of all, thank you. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for sharing your story. It, it's truly an inspiration to hear your journey. And so I really appreciate you sharing it and everyone who listens to it, I, I think will be inspired also. Um, before I ask the questions, where should we point people towards to learn more about you, what you're working on? Mm. On the I mean, web, where should we? Website, I have a website. It's called Divrei Navon, D I V R E I N A V O N. So at divreinavon.com, basically, I have I have like all the papers I've published. I have um, all kinds of shiurim where I teach people um, all kinds of basically, you know, Torah umada kind of stuff. You know, trying to integrate um, what's going on in the world with what we've been learning as a people for 2000 years. Yeah. So everyone check it out. Um, there's some fascinating things on there for sure. I've, I've been on there. Um, so the two last questions I always ask Moise, because it's inspired insider. I always ask what's been a low point, a really low point that you had to push through in the journey. And I'm sure there's, there's a lot of low points. Um, one that sticks out and then what's been a proud moment for you on the journey. So what's, what's yeah. been sticks out to you as a, the especially low, a low mean, point. The, <laughs> clearly the lowest point was when, um, uh, the, one of the startups had fallen through. I didn't have really any idea how it was going to continue We're here in Israel. And I, and, you know, I took my wife out and I, you know, we went just to have like a, a coffee in a, in a, in a, uh, hotel lobby in Jerusalem and I said you know we're at the bottom you know and I don't know what we're gonna do and we may have to go back or I don't know what we're gonna do and you know she said well we'll make it hmm. we'll do what we have to do hmm. um, and uh, yeah there's times when you know you really like I mean uh, on, on that same time I mean, there was another there was actually another time I went to her and I said that's it you know I just I think we're just gonna go back and she just started crying and she wouldn't, she wouldn't say, you know, she would just wouldn't accept it. And we stayed. And, uh, you know, what do you think gives your wife that perseverance? Like she just has <laughs> that, that same thing time and time again of you getting to the door, be like, no, I'm not leaving without this job. It right. seems like the whole way through, she's the same way, which is no, nope, we're going to make it. Nope. We're not leaving. Sorry. Uh -huh. What do yeah. you think gives her that perseverance? <clears throat> I don't know. I guess, you know, I, I guess you have to call it faith. You know, at some point you believe in what you're doing is the right thing. I think my wife has always believed that, that this is the home of the Jews and this is where, you know, we're going to make it. And, uh, and she's had the faith to just say, I don't care, you know, and I don't care if we're poor. And, you know, so we'll, we'll just eat more tuna and pasta or whatever it is. And that's that, you know? Yeah. And um, obviously the high, the high point was uh, standing on the New York Stock Exchange holding my wife's hand when they rang the bell that our stock went public after 16 years of biting the bullet. Yeah. What was going through your head when that happened? Wow. <laughs> Just wow! I mean, you know, I can't believe it, and and akola uh, tova. Yeah, I see. It's like I don't know if like your time that timeline flashed before your eyes. At that, yeah. point, at that point. Yeah. Um. Thank you. Rabbi, I really appreciate it. This was absolutely fantastic, and um. You know, I hope other people are inspired like, like I have been in, and this technology is going to save a lot of lives and make a huge difference in, in the universe. So like that sure. thought you had at age seven, you know, whatever triggered that, thank God, <laughs> right? Literally, figuratively, 
um, for what you've helped create. So, so thank, thank you. you very much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.